Somewhere between here and the edge of the universe lies the answer. Luminous clouds suspended in space, encircling what was once a star like our own sun. All that's left of it are these brightly colored gases, elements formed by nuclear reactions deep inside, released into space on its death. Green and violet, hydrogen and helium, the raw materials of the universe. Red and blue, nitrogen and oxygen, the building blocks of life on Earth. For us to live, stars like this had to die. Every atom in our body was produced by nuclear fusion. In stars that died long before the Earth was even born. We are all the stuff of stars. Our family tree begins here. At its heart, the ghost of a star, a white dwarf, white, hot, small, but unbelievably dense. In the star's dying moments, its atoms fused and squeezed together, making it so dense that just a teaspoon of this white dwarf would weigh one ton. It's a chilling premonition of our sun's fate. Six billion years from now, it'll become a white dwarf. Its death will herald the end of life on Earth. Makes you wonder how many other worlds have come and gone. Celestial stories left untold, lost forever. But the greatest story of them all is still to be told. We must go back through time to the very first chapter to learn how the universe began. The scattered remains of a dead star, the Crab Nebula. 6,000 light years from home, Deep inside, a stellar graveyard. We've learned so much, seen things we'd never have believed possible. Now sights like this, wonders once beyond imagination, we take in our stride. We're ready to face whatever lies ahead, determined to reach the edge of the universe. This is the calm after the storm, after a massive explosion, a supernova that turned a star into dust and gas. The eye of the storm, a spinning, pulsating star, a pulsar. Gravity has squeezed the giant star's core down to this. It's just 12 miles across, unimaginably dense. One pinhead of this would weigh hundreds, maybe millions of tons. And as it shrank, like a figure skater spinning on the spot, arms outstretched, then pulling them in, it began to spin faster. Two beams of light, energy, radiation, spinning 30 times a second, powering the huge cloud of dust and gas. There's so much radiation here, more even than on the sun.
That was easily the deadliest thing we've encountered so far. Once it would have terrified us. But now we realize that without the dangers, there'd be no wonders. Without the nightmares, there'd be no dreams. Getting a strange sensation. A feeling as though there's something bad out here. A malevolent presence. The one thing we didn't want to encounter. Impossibly black. Blotting out the stars behind it. We're staring into the face of extinction. The remains of a giant star. A black hole. denser than a pulsar, and impossible to resist. Its gravity is so intense, not even light can escape. This asteroid, it's a lump of solid rock but it's actually stretching, being dragged towards the gaping hole. Inside, there's no matter as we know it. No time, no space. All the rules of physics collapse. The asteroid is gone. Nobody really knows where. This is the edge of human understanding. There could be millions of black holes creeping around our galaxy, more perhaps than all the stars in the sky, but we wouldn't see them until it was too late. Like this star, spiraling, disappearing down an invisible sinkhole. Who's to say we don't live inside a vast black hole? That the whole universe isn't inside one right now, inside another universe. Think about it for too long and your mind reels. Sometimes it feels like the more we see, the less we know. And we're still in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. The vastness of the universe beyond still lies ahead. The wonders, the dangers, the secrets, they're out there. Waiting to be discovered. thousand light years from home. It's as though we're in a forest thick with trees, each so beautiful, so fascinating, it's impossible to look beyond to see the bigger picture. We have to find a way through to reach the clearing at the galaxy's edge. Faced with sights like this, it's hard to leave. A colossal, glowing cloud, topped by these great towers of dust, the pillars of creation, like a gateway into the unknown. A star factory packed with embryonic star systems, each larger than our solar system. We 
have to resist its siren song, tear ourselves away, to carry on towards the edge of the galaxy. Dazzled by the Milky Way's beauty, we'd been blinded to its terrors and strayed into a cosmic minefield. Like an explosion in slow motion. A massive star, millions of times brighter than our sun. It's going into meltdown. The fuel that sustains it is running out, the nuclear reactions that power it winding down. We're watching its death throes. An even bigger, dangerously unstable star. But this one's about to explode. And when a star this big dies, it's a hundred times more violent than a supernova. We've stumbled into the most violent star death of all, a hypernova. The core's collapsed. It's becoming a black hole. That's the shock wave surging through the star, ripping its outer layers into space. Deadly hypernovas, frozen comets, scorched planets, white dwarves, red giants. Tiny drops in a vast pool of white light. Our home galaxy, the Milky Way. We wanted to know where we fit in. Here's our answer. Civilizations past and present, everyone that's ever lived. The smallest bug, the highest mountain, all of it invisible, not even a tiny speck. Our home is a minor planet orbiting an insignificant star. If it disappeared right now, who would even notice? And yet, so far we've found nowhere else we would rather live. Nowhere we could live. It's only now, far from home, that we're beginning to truly appreciate it. Look at all these stars. Hundreds of thousands of them. Surely one of them, more than one, must be capable of supporting life. Maybe here, in this swarm of stars, the Great Cluster. Back in the 1970s, astronomers sent a message in this direction, detailing the structure of our DNA and our solar system's location. But the message